production of Cornell University. All right, I have two slides in here that you guys have seen. Okay, now, what I'd like to do for the next half an hour, if not more, for the, and we'll go into the next lecture, okay, um, is I want to take, show you guys some case studies. Okay, now these are case studies of go both good things and bad things. And basically we're going to be looking at soil degradation from a lot of different management as well as non-management applications, things that are just happening in the landscape. Okay, and I want you to take a look at these slides and we're going to talk about these slides. We're going to think about, okay, what are the things that are happening on this landscape and what are the potential management things that we could do? Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Jean-Marc, kill like two more banks. Okay, stop writing. Okay, I just want you guys to be looking it up here. Okay, now we're going to be talking about management. Now, we're, but we're coming from this issue of what's the function of this soil. Now, the function of this soil is basically we're using this as cropland. There's a lot of other things that this soil is doing. Okay, but from a management perspective, the intensive management that's going on in this landscape is about crop production. Okay, now. What are some of the things that you see on this slide that they're doing to enhance its functionality and diminish or reduce its, its non-functionality, for lack of a better word? OK, go. We're doing a lot of contour stuff. You can see these lines right here. It looks like the slope is going this way. Okay, you see these grassy swales in here. They're basically capturing erosion. They're slowing down water flow through the system. Okay, it looks like there might be a little terracing in here as well. So it looks like they're maybe actually flattening the landscape. So we're, they're reducing the angle of the slope. Okay, certainly does that make sense? Okay, all right. I'm going to skip these. Well, you know what? All right, what do we see here? Eutrophication, okay, a big green slime, probably uh, duckweed or something like that. Okay, thoughts here? What's going on? Runoff. Runoff. Nitrogen, phosphorus coming from upland, okay? Management strategy here is less here and more where the nutrients are coming from. How about here? What are we seeing? A lot of different pictures here. Let's start at the top. What is it? Trash pile, landfill, dump, a lot of different. OK. Now, the reality is that dumps are there. OK, we have their dumps. We use them. Now, the reality is also that we probably put too much stuff in there that we really shouldn't be putting in there that have lots of other uses. OK. But if this is what we've got, what do we do? Certainly, we can reduce the amount of stuff that's going to it. Okay. Now, Fresh Kills Landfill in uh, New York City, it's not active anymore. It's where a lot of the 9-11 debris went. Okay. It is a landfill that's on Staten Island. It is so large that you basically can see it from, well, you could use to see it from Skylab before it came crashing down, but you basically can see it from space. Okay. It is a very large object, and it's a man-made object. Okay, it's now being decommissioned, it has been decommissioned, and they're trying to figure out ways that they can use this material, or this space, I should say, not the material. Okay, thoughts. What could they do with this space? Okay, I got one example here. What are the thoughts? Yeah. Cover and grow grass, a classic cap type of thing. Okay? Often those caps are integrated into something where you prevent water from getting into the system so that you don't have leachate coming out of the system. Often these, from sanitary design, often these have liners underneath them. And, but even if you have liners, if you keep adding water to a system, sooner or later it's going to go over the liner. Okay? Granted, liners crack and there's other problems associated with them. Okay? Capping also has some other benefits. Any thoughts there? This, what? It looks a little nicer. It certainly looks nicer. You know, the, you, go, you drive along a road, you know when you go, drive by a landfill. They all classically look the same, you know, just sort of like very large septic fields type of thing. Okay. 
Now, this is not necessarily a, a, a sort of soil remediation, but you certainly, when you cap them, you potentially put holes in them above so you can capture methane and you can use cogeneration or something like that coming off of it. Any other ideas? No? Nothing? Go. You could put something on it like an airship or something. You could use it for a building media. Certainly, this is, could be a structural media for something. Okay. Now, if you do that, what are some of the things that you have to think about? And the solution that they have here, basically putting raised beds and putting material on it to separate it, they have to think about this as well. Okay. And I sort of gave it away when I started talking about, you know, you can puncture holes in it and basically put methane generation. Settling and decomposition of the material in there. If the system goes anaerobic, you're going to reduce the amount of decomposition, but you're also going to increase the amount of off-gassing, okay? Non-CO2 gassing issues like methane, okay? If that's the case, that stuff is going to rise. It's not going to be capped by the, C it's, I mean, the, the liner at the bottom is intended to keep water from going down. Gas moves up. Now, theoretically, you can put a geotextile fabric or something like that on top, but the gas is going to move up. Okay? If the gas moves up, it's potentially going to be moving into that, what the, oy, oy, oy. if the gas, well, this is the next slide, how about the next slide? Um, if the gas moves up, it's potentially going to be moving into the structures that you're building. So these are things that you have to think about. Okay? Um, let's move on to the next one. Great slide. Any ideas what it is? Location in China. Agricultural field, very related to this slide right here. Basically waste. You're looking at a trash facility right here. Agricultural operations right next to a trash facility. Okay, all these pieces of stuff that you see in here that's garbage, that's not rocks. Okay, take the next step. This is also China. Agricultural field, right up to here. What do you guys see? Your thoughts? This is not an uncommon practice. And this is not, un you know, this is, this is potentially Something like this, not quite as blatant as this, is going on everywhere in the world. This is basically smelter plant material. Basically, they run it out on the right, and you're basically looking at smelter plant material. You know, they're just spilling it off the side. Nice little sort of esker they're creating. Okay? Right into these agricultural fields. A little bit closer to home. Any thoughts? Same process, two different sources. Anybody from West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maryland, parts of the Carolinas? Mountaintop removal for coal. Okay, this is acid mine waste stream material. See the orange that's in here? This is both, both, mostly sulfur. Okay, now it comes out of the system, out of this system, it's anaerobic, it's coming down as reduced, which means the minute this stuff hits oxygen, it's going to be oxidized. When it gets oxidized, what's going to happen to it? It becomes very acidic, drops the pH. From a management sense, what is that telling you you need to deal with? Acidity issues. Okay, here's another really good example of this. This is... Not quite the same, but this is basically sludge material, or not sludge material, this is dredge material. This is dredge material from the bo bottom of estuarine systems, anaerobic systems. Salt anaerobic systems, which means it too has a lot of this same material in it, the sulfur. Okay? This sulfur comes up, it gets spread as land application. I mean, they're dredging out the bottom of channels and stuff like that. They put it out on land, what is going to happen to it? It comes in with a nice sweet pH of 8.3 or 9.3, if not higher. And within a couple weeks, down to 3.5. From a management sense, what are you going to be thinking about doing here? This one's actually easier to deal with than this one. 
Certainly because you have less material here, but why, what would be the, what, why do you think, or what, what, let's go back to, what do you think you guys would do? Any thoughts here? Add what? Add base. Add base, add a lot of lime. Turns out in this case, because of the amount of material, you really have to basically stabilize this, prevent the water from coming out, and, and put the top, you know, cover the top, basically like a, a, like a landfill. Um, there in Pennsylvania, there, I think there's an airport basically sitting on top of some of these things. They turn it into, you know, they seal it. They have to seal that top because they got to prevent water from getting in. Because if water gets in, it will sol you know, solvate the material and you'd have this stuff coming out of it. Okay? In this scenario, because you have a limited amount of material, you basically expose this to rainwater and let the system flush itself out. Okay? Because of the amount of volume that's here, that's not really a solution. You're going to be looking at so flushing the system out for years and years and years and years. Are there any techniques that you can try to prevent the oxidation step? Like, I mean, the Most of it is like we do with landfills, some sort of sealing process. Now, you potentially also can move this to another anaerobic site, but you're not going to be, from a dredge sense, you're going to dredge here and then put, I mean, the, we can't do that anymore. Lucas, you had a question? All right, this is what I threw the slide in here just so you can see what it looks like. A little bit better slide of it. Okay, here's another one. Thoughts here? What's going on? Slash and burn. Slash and burn. Okay, now this could be slash and burn for a number of different reasons. This could be for agricultural sort of Sweden technology. They're really going to be planting stuff in here. But this could also be clearance for timber cutting. They're actually going to harvest the wood for the wood, not harvest the wood for ash for the, f the f soil. Okay? Uh, it's not... They're burning trees in it. This one's pop, you know, potentially burning trees for putting so trees in as well. They're getting rid of the slash and then planting trees in. Not, not in this scenario. But it could have been. I mean, there's lots, of, there's lots of different scenarios that this could be used for. I mean, here's another example. You know, they're basically burning to uh, weed. Okay? So, what are the consequences of this? Loss of nutrients, certainly, potentially gain of nutrients in the soil, but loss of the biomass nutrients, as well as, I mean, certainly from volatilization. What other potential outcomes might you have from this kind of operation? Nothing. Certainly the, the organisms that are close to this surface are certainly going to be modified. Um, now, depending upon the heat of that fire and the intensity of that fire, or I should say, the, the intensity and the duration of that fire, you know, that depth of heating may not be that deep. Okay, certainly when you have this type of fire up here, you know, this is a pretty fast burn. But there are cases out west where it could be an extremely fast burn, but when you get into some of these pine forests and stuff like that, because of the resins that's in them, in these plants, these fires burn really, really hot. Now, a lot of these plants are adapted to that. In fact, they're required to have a fire regime to be able to spread their seeds. But an interesting side effect with some of these pine or the more resinous plants is that we get something that's called hydrophobicity. The fire burns, and the soil surfaces post-fire become hydrophobic. Okay? When they get, become hydrophobic, you see stuff that looks like this. See this slide right here? Now, this is hydrophobicity due to a, a chemical. This is a, a, a pesticide application. But when I ha start having this happening on top of my soil, what is that going to be doing to infiltration rates? Dramatically reducing it. Okay, And, and if, I'm, if I'm, let's use the example, I'm going to be seeding b behind it. I'm trying to clean out the, the scraps so that I can put in trees. You know, and if I have hydrophobicity, those trees are going to have a serious problem. Okay, so yes, burning is a, a viable strategy, but you need to know how to do it, and you need to know why you're doing it. Okay, how about this one? This is a before and after shot here. What's going on up top? Erosion. 
It's erosion of some sort. So we're starting to see gully type of operations. You know, cut, something's cutting through this. Now, why that's happening, there could be a number of reasons. What would be some of those reasons? I need to get more water to this point, okay? That means there's either something happening at this point that's increasing the erodibility of the soil, i.e. I've lost the vegetation here, or I haven't lost the vegetation here, but someplace up, upstream I'm seeing more intense delivery of water to right here. Does that make sense? So one of those two things, if not both of those things are happening. Okay, so what are your management strategies? First off, you have to figure out what the problem is. If it's because of what's going on here, the solution is here. If the problem is what's going on upstream, the solution is potentially not necessarily here, but maybe upstream. That doesn't necessarily mean the answer is not here, though. The solution is here. Okay, thoughts? What did they do in this case? Increase vegetation. Stabilize the site. And you can see that they stabilize the site not just at the cut, but you can see all these trees up above that are not there. Okay, I've got a couple slides like this. Um, okay, here's another one. This is actually something they're thinking about doing at Dillman right now. Okay, what's, this is the solution. What's the solution? Figure out what the solution is, you gotta figure out what the problem was. Okay, what do you think the problem was? It was probably an erosion event, okay? The solution that you see are a series of sort of terraces that have been stabilized with vegetation. So we're basically probably seeing some sort of hill slope either creep or cut or something like that. I have some dramatic, more dramatic pictures of that a little bit later. How about here? What are you seeing here? Now this could be natural, but this also could be human accelerated. What are you seeing? A number of possible explanation here. Do you guys remember me talking about fairy rings out west? Do you guys remember what fairy rings are? You know, you go out west and you start seeing hills that have rings around them that go around like this. Okay, that's because the animals, the sort of animal operations, the cows don't do really good with steep slopes going up and down. So they tend to go around and around and around and around. Okay, well this could be traffic issues. You could start seeing people moving through here. Um, it also could be animals. Okay, a good example, of the, uh, perhaps not, this is not a really good slide of it, but sort of these hilltop uh, or mountaintop landscapes. Um, in Great Britain, there's a really large sort of, it's, it has a large uh, culture of walking. There's a lot of walkers. Does this sound familiar to anybody? Uh, and there, there's actually rules and laws about, you know, even if you have private property with people walking on it, you're, they're allowed to walk. Okay, well, not too long ago, um, the basically, I'm not sure what bureau it was, basically it was like sort of their, their Bureau of Land Management or something like that, basically said to um, walkers that when you guys die, you can no longer spread your ashes at the top of these hills. Because, you know, with this culture, they were like, you know, I love this spot. When I die, I spread my ashes here. I mean, we have that culture here too, right? Okay. What was happening? Well, if people keep spreading their ashes at the top of these hills, have you guys been, has anybody been mountain climbing around here or something like that? You know, when you get up to the top of these mountains, there's, there's sort of climate issues that are going on, but because of the lack of soil and because the vegetation is sort of sparse up there, they tend to have a lack of nutrients. So if you start add, adding ash, this is a long rigmarole to a story, I'm sorry, okay? But if you start adding ashes at the top of these hills, what are you gonna be doing to the ecosystem. What is ash? It's fertilizer, right? So if you start adding fertilizer to the top of these hills, you're changing the ecosystem at the top of the hills. And so in Great Britain, they were having, the, the tops of these mountains and hills were basically, the, the ecology of the systems were changing. And so they had to put in a law saying, you guys can't spread your ashes there anymore. You know, so if you, if you died before the deadline, you were, made, you, you were set, I guess. I don't know. How about this one? A little bit more dramatic than this one, in a sense. How about that? 
You can see the nice, all these nice gullies coming off of it. And these are definitely, you can see the agricultural fields that are in there. A little bit more closer up, or up close, okay? Here's some of these gully cuts. And this is, a, I don't know if that's corn or Sudan. Um, gullies coming through here, slip faces. What's going on? Any thoughts? In most of these cases, you're basically looking at some sort of nick effect. Okay, where the angle of repose, something has come through and cut it. Okay, now what that cutting is has a lot to do with soil management. Okay, upstream it could have been a water event. It literally could have been a tractor that came through or they could have been digging a road through here or something like that. Okay, thinking about the consequence of that management and what the upstream in a sense effect is going to be. All right, solutions. What? Yeah, cover. cover crop, cover, cover it, so st stabilize it might be part of the solution here. Certainly we could have said you could have designed it better in the first place. But if that's off the table at this point, cover crops, what else? Some sort of yeah, you could go you could go with an armor of some sort, gabion baskets, cement wall type of stuff. And we do that a lot with road cuts and stuff like that, where we really you got a great issue. You can't really design better. You literally have to go through this. So we have to figure out a way of stabilizing. Go. Um, you, you could potentially control the collapse. I mean, certainly we can excavate this out, or you can cut it back so you have a better angle of repose. You see that a lot with roads as well. Rather than trying to put some sort of armor in here that you're going to have to repair again and again and again, because this soil is going to want to go. OK? So rather than trying to repair the wall again and again and again, cut the soil back, stabilize it at, a, at, a, at, a, at a, an angle that it will sta be stable at, and put plants in place. Any other thoughts there? All right, I'm going to stop here. We are going to continue this same vein of conversation on Friday. Come thinking about what the function of that soil is, what the characteristics that we're going to be looking at are, and how potentially we can think about what the function is. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.